Uh, not saying nerd in a bad way, but uh, no, technically I am. <laughs> I'm going with it. Okay, I've never done this before, but I'm gonna do it to today. <laughs> Here's a warning before you watch this video. You may not want to watch this video if you own an electric car now and you've given it a cute little name like LA. Oh, how precious. Or if you're a vegan. Or if you've owned more than one Prius in your lifetime, and that includes your wife or your boyfriend. Or if you ever got a participation trophy when you were in grammar school. Or if your mommy put a gold star sticker on your refrigerator for going pee pee in the potty when you were six years old. All right, so if you're still here, I've got something to say and I'm going to say it if nobody else will. I think electric cars have no place at car shows. <laughs> before some tree-hugging, kale-guzzling hypermiler loses his freaking mind at the very suggestion, let me explain myself. First off, I'm not against electric cars. So I've driven a Tesla Plata, it was fantastic. There are several hypercars that are already using electric motors and a few performance cars that have already moved to electric or are soon moving to electric. I know this is coming and I know when it's all flushed out, maybe 10 years from now, it's gonna be fantastic. Cars like the Dodge Demon 170 and soon the beloved Mustang. And I'm not referring to that stupid stupid Mustang SUV, which is not a Mustang at all. It's just pandering to the crowd. Ford was out of ideas, and so they went with that, and they're fooling nobody. But currently, though, there are not really any mass-produced EV sports cars. Sooner or later, they'll get it right. But right now, most EVs are paper movers, and therefore, they're essentially appliances. They're just, it, it, 50 years from now, they're gonna be like, they're gonna be, it's gonna be like the Jetsons. <laughs> pull up, get in this little thing, people mover like you're in Disneyland and off you go. So in my mind, they have no place at traditional car shows. And I'll get into more of that right after this break. Confession, I hate cleaning my own cars. That's why I love Adams polishes. Whatever you want to clean, polish or shine, Adams has a specific product just for that. Even for matte finishes. Since 2000, Adams Polishes has been offering premium car care products dedicated to the enthusiast. Whether you're a professional detailer or a weekend warrior, their innovative and effective products will enable you to achieve amazing results on your prized possession. Adams, made with pride and passion in the USA. We currently live in a time of turmoil, a period in which the cars we've grown to love over the last century are being banned, not due to obsolescence per se, but it's basically because of a political agenda. Now, I'm all for energy independence and progress. The rush to impose mandates globally smacks of someone's agenda. Why are we doing this so rapidly? Why are we just shutting everything off and then moving forward at full speed? It doesn't make any sense. They're trying to put everybody in EVs. And while the world is moving at full speed toward alternative energy, sources and phasing out internal combustion engines, the vast majority of electric vehicles today are hideous. They look awkward at best and more often ridiculous. And if you say don't judge a book by its cover, you do that every day with muscle cars. So the EVs are appliances, not much more interesting than a toaster. My disdain for the Tesla 3 in particular goes deeper than that though. And my personal observations where I live here in South Orange County, California, Tesla drivers to me are simply former Prius owners with a better FICO score. Clueless, can't make up their mind, turn signals are optional. And too many Tesla drivers seem to have very little situational awareness, which amazes me since they have a ring of video cameras around the car and they seem to have the same problems parking as the, the Prius crowd does. There's a whole Facebook group, Left Lane Prius, talking about how bad Prius people are. Happens to me every week. Happened to me yesterday at the grocery store. There's a Prius that I couldn't back out of the spot without having to tie it at least twice and almost three times. Even senior citizens were honking at this guy. So I don't know what's going on with the people who own and buy these cars. Are they just bad drivers or they just think that the car is gonna drive itself? But from my experiences, it seems like some Tesla drivers just rely too much on unproven technology. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. 20 years from now, it'd probably be flawless, but right now, not so much. I still can't see me driving though. Almost everyone I know who owns a Tesla has had big problems. The build quality is not good. The panel alignment inside and out is barely on par with eight-year-old Kias, which doesn't impress me at all, especially for that price. One of my friends had so many problems, she traded her Tesla in for a brand new one. <laughs> what? 
being stupid or something. It's like trading in one crazy girlfriend for another one. So the Tesla cult is strong and loyal and I respect that. I for one have great admiration of Elon Musk, but I certainly wouldn't buy one of his cars right now, maybe 10 years from now, but not now. There is one Tesla guy though that comes to our cars and coffee event regularly. He has modified his Tesla with some over fender flares, uh, different wheels, red pinstriping. Ugh. And for his Grand Slam, he's hooked up speakers outside of his Tesla to play V8 sounds whenever he presses on the throttle pedal. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Frankly, that is more heinous to me than putting an M badge on a BMW 328. It's more fraudulent than putting a Nissan GTR badge on a Nissan GTT. <laughs> Every time I see that guy coming, I just I turn around and walk away. I just can't stand there. And frankly, true gearheads, you see them walking away from him like he farted in an elevator. Did you fart? fart. Oh. The people who wear pocket protectors, though, really flock to this car because it's kind of a nerd kind of thing. Uh, I'm not saying nerd in a bad way, but uh, no, technically I am. <laughs> I'm going with it. But stereotypical exaggerations aside, these EVs just don't fit in car shows that are comprised of muscle cars, supercars, collectible cars, classic cars, all using internal combustion engines. Our cars have soul. EV cars have nothing. I remember a time when car show organizers would weed out the cars that really aren't up to snuff. The, the beat up cars and the unfinished cars would park in the spectator lock. Most people knew that anyway, and so they pulled over there on their own. Today, we have to tell them. Today, it seems like we're living among the participation trophy generation. Car show organizers seem to let any kind of car into the shows. Does anybody really want to see a 1996 Ford Taurus with the clear coat peeling off the car? And I'm not talking about an SHO, so don't bother putting that in my comments. So why are show organizers letting in EVs? Perhaps just for the sake of keeping the peace or bolstering their car counts. Why? Do they really need more cars in there? But frankly, every time I see a Tesla roll into one of our car shows, I see people cringing. It's like that uninvited guest that rolls into your party and nobody wants them. Hell, <laughs> if you look at the internet, even the owners are embarrassed to drive them. There have been many reports of owners riding in the back seat. Apparently, these owners don't want their friends to see them <laughs> behind the wheel of one of these things or something else is going on. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Jokes aside, the irresponsible Tesla owners who sleep behind the wheel or misuse the full self-driving feature are almost as bad as the intersection takeover crowd, and these people are given Tesla's really bad name when they crash. My point is that these cars are still controversial in some circles, rejected in others, and basically just generally viewed as a threat to the car modification industry, largely because there's not much you can modify on an electric vehicle as of now. And you have to remember, this is big business. So when the last gas-powered car rolls off the assembly line, companies that have been making parts and accessories for decades will start dying off and thousands of jobs will be lost. This is all the, the part of the progress of the world, right? And it's not going to be fun, but we don't have to help push up with the timetable. Yes, a fair number of electric cars are faster than many of today's sports cars, blah, blah, blah. But electric cars just don't make the right noises. Most don't look like sports cars. And some say that most of today's electric cars have absolutely no soul. I tend to agree with that. If you open the hood of one of these EVs, you'll see wires, wire looms, boxes, and it's like looking inside your toaster. It's not interesting at all. And in some cases, the front is just a storage compartment. <laughs> so why would anyone want to bring an EV to a car show? What's to show? Your front trunk? Or the gaggle of wires and tubes under the hood that looks like a bowl of udon noodles? Who's impressed by this? Nobody. Who cares? There's nothing to see here, folks. Ooh, corrugated wire looms. So exciting, yeah. <laughs> That's my wife talking. <laughs> And the interiors of many of these EVs are not much different than those you'd find in gas-powered cars today. It doesn't matter. Most people don't even open their doors at a car show unless it's a true car show build. So what are we looking at? The iPad staple to the dash? The Hyundai Kona EV's dash is much like any other current conventional car or an SUV like the Mazda. It's modest, somewhat Spartan, functional, but nothing groundbreaking and therefore not interesting. Again, there's just nothing interesting about these things. So what's the point? People who go Go to the current crop of car shows, want to see muscle cars, sports cars, race cars, and exotics. They do not want to see appliances owned by virtue signaling tree huggers. If that's a generalization, take it as a joke. Oh, I'm saving the environment. Really? Where did you get the electricity to charge your EV? In California, 35% comes from fossil fuel. 
What about the batteries? There is still no real way to recycle lithium efficiently. The power to melt them down is enormous. So they're not all that green, and I'm doing another video on that, and when you see that, I have all the stats. The mining of these materials can also lead to the release of toxic byproducts. That, in countries with less ideal environmental policies, can be devastating for the environment. Mining minerals like cobalt in Africa is done by children. It's a fact. They call it artisans, and they're, it's basically slave labor. And so when I see somebody roll into a car show with a Tesla, I'm not impressed. I'm just not impressed. I don't understand when somebody pulls up into a car show with a bone stock Ionic 5 or 6 or something like that. Are they doing it as a protest because we have to have inclusivity? Everybody's got to be there. Now, of course, I know plenty of people who own proper cars, but also use an EV for some specific purposes, maybe for commuting or for local errands, and I respect that. But for me, driving an EV into a car show is like getting down with a fat girl. It might be fun, but I wouldn't want any of my friends to see me do it. <laughs> and I certainly wouldn't bring one to a car show, and if I did, I'd park it way out back and hike to the show. Now, you can bring cars like a Porsche 918 or any other hybrid exotic car, and you'll be welcomed by every participant. That's fine. That's fantastic. But nobody wants to see your daily EV, and if you roll in there with a Nissan Leaf, you're broken I'm sorry if you roll in with an EV SUV you should go find the spectator parking lot and go use your parking sensors your front rear and overhead cameras to hopefully park between the lines for the first time in your life Woohoo! go park in front of the Best Buy store with all the other appliances you'll fit right in <laughs> And if you think I'm being harsh, why not take your muscle car to any of the EV shows here in Southern California? There's at least five running this year. I bet you don't get in at all, okay? So they're telling you what you gotta do, but they don't reciprocate. So no sympathy. Eventually, EVs, hybrids, and hydrogen power cars will outnumber gasoline cars, but it will be some time before today's automotive fans will start getting excited about EVs and not the current crop EVs. It's gonna take much more to impress this crowd. Would I ever buy an EV? Sure, if they made something that was sporty, it had a 400 mile reliable range, and only after the nation grid is at least as reliable as today's availability of gasoline. So I'm not a hater, I'm just saying we're not there yet. So until then, I can see EVs in front of any tofu restaurant or any Trader Joe's on any day. So let's shun these posers, those virtual signaling elitists. I expect all of you to be holding signs in front of cars and cars for next week. All right, all jokes aside, the truth is that EVs are coming. It's undeniable. But at our local Cars and Coffee, the biggest weekly car show in the world, the organizers set up a special section for EV sponsors. Currently, Polestar occupies that section. It's a great way for Polestar to build awareness and to educate showgoers and start to introduce them to the technology. That I can live with. That's the perfect way to do it. And if more car shows did it that way, I think people would start to embrace it soft sell, not a hard sell. But I still don't want private citizens with their daily driver Tesla to be granted access to car shows. But short of that, EVs should be admitted to a special section of the parking lot and do it in a way that they're showcasing the technology. And if you EV drivers roll into a car show by mistake, don't be like this guy. You should park far away from the cool cars, mostly because we don't want our cars to go up in flames when yours does. So what do you think? If you agree, show me in the comments. Thanks for listening to my rant. I hope you had a little fun with it because I did. So try not to take it too seriously. Seriously, and I'm betting that uh, most true car fans probably feel somewhat the same. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you another time.